Hello, I'm Richard Cartwright with Streampunk Media. Um, I, I'm going to talk to you about the new FIMS Open Source initiative, uh, which is now serving and now available for use. Um, so, but FIMS is already an open standard. What do you mean by open source? Uh, so I'm going to go into to what the difference is here, um, how we're going to do open source development going forward with Git, um, the fact that FIMS was already be using Git, so the FIMS participants had already moved to Git, so for them it's nothing new, but that was just a private approach. Now we're moving into the open uh, and public. I'm going to talk about uh, the structure that's there, both um, on, the, uh, on the site and in terms of how we're going to do branching uh, to manage the repositories, uh, and then if you want to contribute, how we do additions and fixes, uh, and if you want to fork it, and do your own work using the repository, we positively uh, encourage you to do that. Uh, and so we imagine that people will make derivatives of FIMS uh, or make related projects, perhaps even in different industries for media and entertainment. Uh, and finally, just a note on the IPR and licensing, which is designed to be as permissive as we can. Um, so FIMS is an open standard. Uh, we publish, uh, every major version is published uh, on a website and can be freely downloaded. Um, to access them during the development process, you need to sign a FIMS participation agreement uh, that says that uh, you agree to pay fair, play fair in terms of IPR, uh, RAND Z, that you're not going to uh, drop some form of patent uh, in and uh, lock people out from the work. It's a pretty standard thing for, for working in a collaborative uh, commercial environment. Um, the other issue with uh, why we'd like to go open source is that the core process in FIMS, as with many specifications and standards organization, uh, takes time uh, and there may be an opportunity to go quite a lot faster, particularly if people have already done some work uh, in a particular area or on a particular service. Um, so uh, to prevent people saying, hello, is anybody there? We're going to make it very clear what's going on, and every check-in that is done towards developing FIMS from now on will be visible, uh, and people can contribute back quickly uh, by uh, just making a pull request and suggesting a change. And all we have to do is have a quick review within the FIMS internal management team, and if we're happy with that, we'll pull it in. We'd like uh, to enable all to grow FIMS, so anybody who's involved with FIMS can either grow it or benefit from it. Um, and uh, so we're encouraging additions, fixes, derivatives, and related products, projects, all those things. Um, we also want to have an open source approach that's unsurprising to those who are used to working with open source. So a strange committee system from the AMWA uh, that appears closed and then suddenly goes open at various points is not the way that the open source community uh, work. Typically, they will put up things uh, piece by piece. Um, I now work for a business that is developing pretty much everything open source, and it's a great way of working. You get things picked up and things tested in ways that you, you haven't necessarily expected. So this is a, a picture. This was the FIMS private GitHub on uh, EBU slash FIMS, um, and uh, that's where we were working. Um, the public uh, GitHub was there for a while, uh, but now has got a uh, FIMS uh, repository inside it. So it's github.com slash fims.tv uh, and there you go to the FIMS project and that's where you'll find FIMS is. We also have a, a currently running uh, project within FIMS called FIMS Test and the FIMS Test Suite as far as they've got so far is also available as another open source uh, project here on our GitHub. Um, so inside FIMS, the public repository is pretty much looks the same as the private one. It's been tidied up. Uh, the master branch is FIMS version 1.2, and it's tagged as FIMS version 1.2. So the master will always be the latest approved, uh, approved version. But work in progress is available through the branches, and the branches are shown. Um, uh, I've just uh, highlighted them here. So we've got the currently active projects, FIMS AME, uh, FIMS Rep 2.0, uh, moving the documentation of FIMS to uh, FIM Markdown. Uh, these are all up, uh, current branches that we will merge in. So a little bit more about the merging process. Um, how do we get from version 1.1 to version 1.2? Well, first of all, we just did an update to update all version numbers. Um, and then the various uh, sub-projects REST, 
QA and timecode went away and did their work on separate branches. And at various points, they either merged back onto the, the master branch or they merged with one another where there was a collaboration between the subgroups to agree on a certain uh, aspect of the FIM specification. Uh, then we went through a technical validation, so we would tag as review. We actually started work on FIMS 1.3 at that point before we'd finished 1.2, and that's a perfectly acceptable way of working. We had an approval, and then we tagged uh, this branch that went to the master branch, version 1.2, and we put a tag on version 1.2. So we still have a technical committee process to review and approve according to the AMR and EBU processes, uh, but we're using GitHub as a means of conveying the specification. <coughs> the structure is quite simple. If you go to the GitHub repository, you have a, a markdown readme file introducing things. You have the license file, which I'll come into later, um, and a notice file. Um, Contributions.md is a description of how you contribute, uh, which isn't quite finished, but it's almost there. Um, then the main specification is in the WSDL REST XSD folder, uh, and that's where you can go and find both the, the REST and the SOAP based. Uh, description of the services. Um, docs will contain the markdown version of the documentation. Uh, at the moment there's a Word document and a PDF in there that describes from 1.2. <coughs> um, there is a space to align with the AMWA uh, process to put in uh, declarations of contribution. So if a company has contributed to my IPR to FRIMS, they can uh, fill in the standard contribution form and declare that they are giving that freely. Um, and then there are some, there's space for some examples. And those examples should be tied to the version of FIMS that is tagged. So we may have to take examples in and out depending on uh, the version. Um, so that is the, if you like, the committee process for developing in subgroups going forward. But we're also completely open to the idea of people forking FIMS creating a, a separate copy of the project, doing work on it, and then submitting it back. Um, so we've got, for example, here the idea of an addition, um, a fix, a derivative, or a related project. And I'm going to go into more of those on, on the next, uh, next slides. So an addition, for example, you might have been working in a FIMS-like environment, and you needed far more services than just the capture, transfer, transform, uh, repository and QA services that FIMS is providing. Um, you might have developed uh, some kind of um, uh, playout device controller, for example, which is FIMS-like but isn't FIMS. But on a review, you realize, well, I could just contribute this back. So you could fork the FIMS project, create an addition, uh, add in your, um, uh, your specific features, specific services, make a pull request back to the FIMS team, they would then create a merge branch to review and approval, and then we can merge that back in to the next major version of FIMS. Um, and that doesn't have to end there. If you further develop your services going forward, you can make subsequent pull requests, and they can then find a route to get into the next major version of FIMS. Um, the other thing you may have noticed, just as a, it could be a typo, it could be a schema that doesn't quite validate in a particular tool, uh, that wasn't picked up during testing and approval, uh, in which case there's no point to go back through a whole review cycle. Um, you can raise an issue, a GitHub issue, uh, and then perhaps make a pull request, uh, or it could be fixed internally by the FIMS team, and we can just merge that back onto the main branch and tag it as a, as a, as a, a tertiary version, a, a version uh, something, something dot one. Um, and that just, it shouldn't break anything, it just makes sure that something that was slightly broken gets fixed. Um, derivative projects, this might be that you want to do something FIMS-like, maybe in a different industry, uh, but you can fork FIMS, um, uh, maybe you like some aspect of the data model and you want to reuse it, uh, for example, in medical imaging, uh, and you recognize a number of problems that have been solved in FIMS uh, have also uh, relevant in your industry, but then you're very welcome just to fork it and never do a pull request back to us. Obviously, it's nice if you let us know what you're up to, but that's not essential. It is. Uh, free for you uh, to do that. Um, uh, you might also uh, even make something that, that's related. So one example is that uh, a consultant made a workflow engine that drove FIMS for CBC Radio Canada, um, and that software uh, is could be useful to anybody who's doing FIMS, 
but isn't actually part of the core work of FIMS at this time. So it's a related project, um, and it's completely separate, but it's useful for it to start from our data model, and if it ever wants to resync with the same data model again in the future, it just has to pull in our data model. So it sits there as a related, but not it's not actually uh, like FIMS at all. Um, so we want to encourage this kind of non-core working. You can create at any time. Everyone is enabled, whether they're a participant or not. Um, if you want to contribute to the core, ideally you should be a FIMS participant before you make a pull request, uh, and we, we, we'd like to request that. The reason is then that we don't, we're not accidentally polluting our core code base, um, and that process will be administered by the FIMS Architecture Council. Um, all non-core projects we'd like to be able to link to from our website, so please keep us in touch with, with what you're doing. Um, and they will have a traceable link because of the Git process. Um, and if it was at any time useful to merge what you've done back in, we have the ability to do that uh, using tools that are relatively safe. Uh, the licensing is a FIMS core, uses the Apache 2.0 license. It's a permissive license. Uh, we'd like fork projects to respect uh, the terms of that license, but they are not, that's not heavyweight uh, in any sense and doesn't restrict commercial use. Um, core project copyright remains AMWA and EBU. Uh, we remain subject to the AMWA IPR policy, uh, so we will need contribution forms for any IPR that is committed. Um, and um, this was the case a while back, actually, this point's not so valid, but we, this is the AMWA RFC process has expanded to use a, a Git style approach, for example, for other projects like AS11. It's not the only area of AMWA activity that's doing this, or indeed many other projects across uh, AMWA or EBU. So thank you very much for your interest. Uh, FIMS is now live on uh, github.com slash FIMS hyphen TV. Um, if you've got any feedback, uh, please go to the FIMS dev uh, mailing list. Uh, if you'd like to email my, myself and discuss any of this any further, then uh, my email address is spark at stringpunk.media. So uh, thank you for listening and uh, enjoy open source.